Thank you, Konstantin. Um, like Konstantin said, I'm from Sweden. I'm very happy to be invited here. Nice seeing you and Mike in Amsterdam. But uh, my German, I was reading German at school 20 years ago. I've been not practicing that since. So I should not try to make a presentation in German because no one would understand and that will be not even close, but way, way out of my comfort zone. Uh, and then, Toyota Kata. And uh, when I was talking in Amsterdam, I said that uh, uh, what is described in Mike's book, Toyota Kata, is a very good description of how we have worked or how I have experienced the changes we have made in the factory where I've been working. And I said, but the word Toyota Kata does not exist in Toyota, because we never talk about Kata. I'll come back to that one a little bit later. Um, shortly about me, directly from the University in Linköping, I joined the company that was called VT, so I've been working for this company for 19 years, close to 20 now. My plan was to work two, three years and then move on in my career, but I have had this a big amount of fun the entire time. I have new challenges all the time, so I'm still in the same company, really loving my job, what I'm doing. So, started as a production engineer, trainee there, been working as a project manager. I was a part when we started the TPS training office, when we started to learn TPS from Scania in the beginning and Toyota. I was working for the business planning office when we were merging uh, Toyota and BT been working as a production manager, been responsible for our production control, our planning department, had a little bit of sidestepping working with the products and product management, how to developing them. But that's not really as fun as working with the processes and working with Lean. And then a few years ago, we decided that we should start up a new business area, which we call Toyota Lean Academy, where we as Toyota, are supporting external companies, customers, of how to improve their processes with, within the context of Lean, learning Lean from us as Toyota. And that's probably the most fun and enjoying part of my job so far, not really knowing what is next to come. Um, the agenda for today, uh, four different items. I will talk about the journey we have made from BT to Toyota. Uh, we are striving to be perfect, that's challenging, Tr always trying to get better. And I will talk a little bit about one approach of how we are solving problems, and a short summary in the end. Toyota, when you talk about that, when you think mostly of the cars, it's a group of 17 companies with a big number of employees, 650 companies around the globe, so it's a big footprint in total. Uh, I'm working in Toyota Industries Corporation. That's the original Toyota company, and I guess you recognize mo uh, maybe not most, but a few of these uh, logos on the screen there. If we look at uh, Toyota Industries, we have four business segments. We are producing some cars, the Yaris, the RAV4, and also producing components for uh, other cars. We are producing uh, compressors um, here in Germany. The biggest portion is the material handling, where forklifts uh, or Gabelstapler is the big portion of that one. We still are uh, running the uh, textile machine or division, and we are actually world leading if you want to buy an automatic loom. So then please come to us. And then we have a, new, a small portion of others as well. Uh, I'm working in the material handling uh, area there for all these uh, close to 20 years. In this story, as it has four main characters, it's VT, that was the company in Sweden that was acquired by Toyota in the year 2000, a mid-sized, profitable, well-healthy company. Uh, I choose to highlight one of the senseis, Mr. Nomura, a TPS guru, and he has been guiding, teaching, training us through this journey. And 
When I think about how we've been working with him, reading Mike's books, then it's very much a good description from Mike, the way we have been experiencing this one. But do we call it kata? No, we just do it. But um, actually last week, I saw Kata in Toyota. We had a visit from one guy. He's production engineering manager in our Japanese plant in Takahama, and his name is Kata. So I've seen Toyota Kata. <laughs> uh, Nomura, every time when he has, he has been visiting us, he has given out a written report in this A3 format, handwritten. Impressive, isn't it? And sometimes it's a lecture uh, of how to use a method, how is the perfect golf swing, description how to do it. And then he comes back and says, okay, okay, you're trying to do it, but you need to fine tune it a little bit like this one to make it work. So both giving how to work in the context and supporting us to excel in these areas. And Nomura always gives the input to the managers, to the top of our company. And on the picture, you see the, uh, our president to the right and our vice president operations to the left. And it's always to the top of the company who receives the instruction or re receives the guidance from Nomura. And it's the top management and cascading that one down bit by bit. That's our responsibility. So we involve the team in having them to work and deliver the extraordinary results in the end. Um, if we look at our journey, you see our volume development on the bars, you see our warranty claim paid uh, on the line, volume going up, money paying for bad quality going down. Really good combination. And then the question is, how have we done this? It started with the corporate phase, the first five years-ish. We were trying to get to know each other, a number of managers were visiting US, uh, no, not US, Japan. We had TPS coordinators, a Japan guy uh, working in our plant. We started the TPS office. We went on different trainings for, with the top management, but getting to learn each other, not that much really happened during that time. But then we said, okay, we need to get more structure. We need to have this concert and do it in the right way, the way we want as a company. We started to focus on safety and quality, and we started with the Dantutsu, that means undisputed number one, and with the support from Nomura, working with his quality solving methods, how to do that one, being very strict on uh, standardized work, involving the team in developing that one, working with the daily management, continuous follow-up, knowing where we are every single time. Uh, also, like Mike mentioned this morning, the roles with the team leaders, creating organizations who are able to have the resources to work with the continuous improvements. We start with our first driven assembly line at that time, working with the safety dojo. And then Dantutsu won. The target was to reduce the quality problems by 50% within a year. And then we had the Dantutsu 2. It was another 50% for the next year. And then the Dantutsu 3 came, and then it's not a surprise that it comes another 50%. So the target was 90% reduction of all problems related to quality. A little bit of a challenge. And after working with safety quality, setting the baseline, started to work with the just-in-time, um, working with working process Kaizen, we started and seeing that we had some problems on the line, we see there was a need of preparing material in a better way, optimizing the workstations, introducing uh, kitting in one piece flow. And for this portion, we had another sensei, Shinkai, a little bit less structured compared to Nomura, but it was his uh, specific area. Started with manufacturing KPIs, how we can compare different factories to each other, and starting to have even more people going to uh, Japan for regular training, getting the real injection, how it is to work in a true Toyota factory, because we still can learn a lot from them. The current phase is the Kaizen benchmark, um, more focusing on softer parts with 
uh, HR training, how we are working with different people, what do we require from a group leader or supervisor, what behavior are we looking for from a manager within Toyota. Working with Toyota Industry Job Instruction, um, you can call it the TWI if you're not working within Toyota, very similar to each other, and also work with another problem-solving forum, uh, quality control circles, not with a uh, first purpose of solving the problems, but with the purpose of making sure that we have employees who are solving the problems. And when an employee solves the problems, they say, wow, we did this one, great. And it boosts your confidence at the, as an employee, so we are increasing the job satisfaction. So, um, what is next? Yeah, that's what I'm going to talk about. It's, you saw our past, and of course we have to be proud of what we have achieved so far. But we always want to continue to improve. And we are always striving to get up. And this, you don't see the end of the road here. And you never see the end of the road in front of you, because we are overcoming that one step by step. And it's not a straight line. It goes a little bit back and forth like that one. So be proud of the past, celebrate that one, but always strive to improve, because you can do better tomorrow compared to what you have done today. We are striving to be perfect, and to do that one, we are doing that one by eliminating our problems one by one. And in that case, what's a problem? That's coming back to that one. And we are striving to take every single uh, waste or muda out of the process. We'll I ever experienced that we have done that one? No. With L, will anyone do that one? No. Because when we have come to a certain level, we have this brilliant idea of new products. And then we start a little bit over again with and learning from that one. So we always have new problems. And don't, if we don't see them, then we challenge us more so we see more of the problems because we just love them. Um, This is a short what we have been ach achieved the last uh, 10 years in the factory in Sweden. We have come to, we have achieved 60% of the vision of eliminating the accidents, 80% in terms of uh, reducing claim costs, calculated in real money, in number of claims, because if you do it the right way, it doesn't matter uh, the volume. Uh, we have increased the factory turnover by more than 100%. Productivity has gone up. And as the result of the top one, we have also been able to improve the profit of the company. We're not focusing on that one. It's just the result of the other items. A problem for us is as simple as this one. It's the gap between the current condition and the ideal condition. And the better we can define the current condition, where we are and where we want to be, the easier it is for us to understand what's the problem. And you can say, okay, but what about the timing in that case? Okay, we know where we are today. And what can we improve? What happened today? Did we have any defect? Okay, then, of course, that's the first priority. This is what we want to eliminate and what we need to work on for tomorrow because we want to be better tomorrow compared to what we are today. In that case, we want to challenge ourselves. It's no problem at all if we see that we have red figures on the board, that we are not meeting our challenge target. Because then we say, okay, here is the area where we need to focus our resources. This is the area where we have to pay attention. So maybe red is the new green. Uh, I have to go a little bit into some details, talking about one approach, how we are, or how we are solving problems. This one is valid both for uh, quality, for uh, safety as well, if you want to do that one. But first of all, uh, we need to classify, or we are classifying the problems, knowing what does the process look like. We have in our factory welding, painting, and assembly, uh, complete vehicle inspection before shipping it off to the customer. 
It's always good to visualize it. By hand is 100% okay. Um, we start with if we ship something to the customer and we detect the problem at the customer site, then we see that one as the biggest problem we can have because we don't want to push our problems onto the customer. So that one is really important and really severe. And that one we are classifying them as D defects, and they are the one that we want to solve. But they are more complicated to solve because it might take some time before this problem is detected at the customer site. That's why we're working on, with our final inspection based upon the result of what we know from the customer site. What do we find at the very, very end before putting uh, our equipment onto the lorry? And we classify them as C defects. And that is something that actually has passed through our entire line, which we didn't find that problem. So something is not good enough in our processes. If we find the uh, process in the downstream flow from our position, then we classify them as a D. I didn't find the issue that I caused. And the last one, if I produce it and I find it myself, I classify that one as an A. And we want to know how far we are pushing the defects before we are actually finding them. And classifying this one, and then sorting this one out with our uh, quality assurance department, seeing, okay, making the first investigation, what is the point of origin of this one? And if it's something that comes from our R&D department, of course, R&D are the ones who should solve this one. If it comes from the supplier, then we ask the supplier to work and come back to us with what are the countermeasure. And if we have caused that one by our own operation, we see, okay, what team in the, in the operation are the point of origin, and how can we find the uh, root cause and implement the countermeasure in this area. Uh, because it's really, really key to know where it happens, because that's the point where we have to solve the problem. Um, the way we are doing is a eight-step model. We have a big number of different eight-step models. The first thing is that we need to confirm what is the problem. We want to see the part. We want to touch it, smell it, look around it, and make our own investigation. So if it's something that is defect, yes or no, and really understanding that one. And when we do that one, we actually sort the stock where we found the problem. We walk upstream the line, checking every single goods until we see that one is defect, this one is correct. Okay, then we know here is the point of origin. Here is where we need to make the root cause analysis to find what are, what are the problems. Understanding the root cause. And here, it's very important to understand that the speed here is really, really important. Because, Konstantin, what did you do last Thursday? Three o'clock in the afternoon. Point taken, right? <laughs> now, what did you do just before you entered the room right now? Uh, Not sure. I hoped you had an answer to that one. <laughs> Yeah, perfect. But we need to talk to the operator. And when I say we, it's the team leader together with the operator that makes this analysis. Why did this happen? What are the root causes using the phi y, the Ishikawa, or whatever you want to do this one? But the operator is the expert of the process. So the operator is the one who has the, all the answers. It's not me as a manager or the technician or something. It's the operator. When we have found the root cause, uh, we make the countermeasure. And it's the team leader who is responsible for doing that one. All these items should be done within the same day as we have found the problem. That's our target. We're not always meeting that target. Um, next day, in the morning, we have the RSH meeting. It's hosted by Quality Assurance. We are presenting the solutions 
for the problems that occurred yesterday. And in that meeting, we have the management team of the factory on place. So you're presenting it to the management team. If there is anything that is unknown, uh, uncertain about this problem, is it really a good solution? Then we walk out to the site where the point origin is and look at it and have an explanation of how this one is done uh, on site. We are doing this one as a basis to uh, inform the other persons in the organization, okay, we had a problem with low, low bolts in one of the lines, and when we explain, ah, it might be that I have that type and can have that type of problems in my operation as well. So that's one reason why we're running the SH meeting. After we have approved the solution, we standardize, document, update the standard how to work, and we make the Yokotan. And you can read about Yokotan in Konstantin's book or paper. Next part is teaching and training. You all try to fold your arms in different ways. You have felt how hard it is to change. So it requires teaching and training and following up that we're doing these ones. And then the last step is daily control, following up that we are working according to the new standard, making sure that this defect is not coming back again. And our target is that the defect that happened, it's eliminated if it doesn't come back within three years. And this you just need to do for all your problems, and then you will be very successful. Take them one by one. Uh, of course, you need to visualize and see the results. If you see that the line is going down like this one, your activity is good, it delivers the result. If we had uh, been able to show something like this one, Nomura was quite happy. Um, if you have a line that is fluctuating up and down, you talk to someone, you need to pay more attention to this one. It will work very short term, but not in the long term. And then something's wrong. Then you need to study your process, you need to understand the process. Has anything changed, or why aren't we getting the results that we have done? Because every single time, we, our targets of this defect should be eliminated. And if it comes back, then we need to understand why did this happen? What can we learn about what we did last time? Is it related to that we have new material, uh, new persons on the processes, not trained the right way, or what could it be? Or what has happened? Why did we not achieve the target in the beginning? What to learn from that one? And if they come back again, of course we need to consider why our first countermeasure was not sufficient enough. Um, Jumping short uh, into the summary, the most important part is starting in the top and working top down. The top management, they need to work as role models. This slide is stolen from one of our Japanese guys. I normally don't write gregarious animals because it's too hard to say, but it means that uh, we as human beings are work, uh, we are people who uh, want to work in groups and teams and so on, and we tend to follow the way the leader acts. So it's really important that we start on the top, do the way and act in that way that we want. And it doesn't matter if it, uh, it's related to kata, if it's related to uh, anything else, you need to start at the top there, and then the people in the organization will follow your lead and follow your example, as long as you're doing it in the right way. Um, Taichi Ono, the architect of TPS, he said that Toyota managers should be sufficiently engaged on the factory floor that they have to wash their hands at least three times a day. And it's not about making the push-ups, because after they have done that one, you should also wash your hands. You need to go into the shop floor and get your hands dirty and doing that one. Being there, understanding, because everything we do as managers, we are just support functions.
to the processes that is on the shop floor. So we need to do the best we can to support them, to give them the best possible uh, conditions to perform their job. And we can only do that one by observing the true processes we have on the shop floor. So get down there, take off the nice white shirt, take off your jacket, be prepared and get your hands dirty. And we have been working this and we have started, uh, like I said, the Teotelin Academy, how supporting uh, other companies in doing their lean journey. Uh, I'm here uh, for the rest of the day. Thank you for letting me speak last, Konstantin. Uh, and also my colleague, uh, Matthias Bingel. His German is as good as my Swedish. <laughs> and if there are any questions uh, more related to this short presentation, we are more than willing to ask all of them. And um, thank you for listening. And uh, from our founder, Sakichi Toyoda, he said that one. Before you say you can't do it, try it. And I think you said test it this morning, Mike. And I think that's very much the same. Yeah. So thank you.